What is going on trainers? Drumble here bringing some more Pokemon Go PvP content and today we're talking about a great league team and a Pokemon that I've wanted to talk about for a while but it actually got a buff this season so even more interesting to talk about and um, it's actually stronger than I think people are giving it credence for and that Pokemon is Gogoat. Now Gogoat, Skiddo, um, Skiddo's Evolution only became available at the Safari Zone events starting last year. And I went to Barcelona for the Safari Zone there, so I did actually get my my hands on a few Skiddo. Well, a lot of Skiddo. I think I've still got like a hundred in my storage that I'm willing to trade out to people. <laughs> but, um, and I got myself the Shinies as well. But Gogo, just before release, was rumoured to have Vine Whip, Leaf Blade and Rock Slide. And that move combination is insanely good because Vine Whip's great for energy generation. Leaf Blade is one of the best energy efficient charge moves in the game, period. Like Leaf Blade is an amazing move and was one of the reasons that really gives so many grass types that can have access to it, makes them so strong. It's why Shiftry was so powerful as a safe swap for a long time in the early Go Battle League. Um, and what actually happened was just before release, they took Rock Slide off Go Goat and people were like, well, that's it. It's not going to be viable. Like with Rock Slide, it was estimated to be one of, if not the strongest Pokemon in Great League in general. And then they took it off it and people were like, well, it's going to be useless now because it had access to Brick Break as its other charge move. And Brick Break was very much like a filler charge move, just um, just there for base coverage. You don't really see many Pokemon at all that even have access to Brick Break. You see like the under under evolved like fighting types like Machop has Brick Break and Vigor off has access to Brick Break, but now they've made it so that it guarantees a defense drop on uh, your opponent's Pokemon when you hit him with Brick Break, and that gives it a lot more utility in general. It means it can, you know, cause damage to start racking up a little bit faster in some matchups, especially like in matchups where it's super effective. So now you can throw a Brick Break against, let's say, a Lickitung with Gogoat, and then you go for Leaf Blade, because Leaf Blade is actually still more damage even though Brick Break is super effective, just Leaf Blade is that good of a move and it's stab and all that. But buffing that second Leaf Blade, or the Leaf Blade's damage, means that you're then possibly able to farm down Lickitung with your Vine Whips as well by that point, when you get to that point of the matchup. So there's a few examples like that where I think it gives it quite a bit more play than I think people are thinking about. And I've been running it to great success. I've been at around the 2400s with this team for the last week. So, well, I said last week, last three, four days on and off, I've been running this team and it's holding its own at like 2,400 up to just underneath 2,500 ELO. And like I said, the leaderboards are starting at like 2,600, 2,700 right now. So to be at 2,500 is quite, it means the team is solid. You know what I mean? Like it, later on in the season, that's the equivalent of being at an above legend rank in terms of the trainers you're facing and the ability and the, the Pokemon that they're going to be running and stuff. So... Solid team, and let's just take a look at some of the matchups. We're actually going to be pairing it up with Mantine because Mantine, great Pokemon. I don't really use it all that much. I wanted to give it a go. It did get access. I don't know if it already had access to Water Pulse or if it just like Water Pulse got buffed this season, but we're not running Water Pulse anyway on Mantine. Just as reference, we're going for Aerial Ace and Ice Beam as our charge moves just to give it the right coverage that I thought matched up with Go Go better. And Water Pulse, I think, like I said, it got better this season, but it's still not good. Not in my opinion, anyway. Um, I might be wrong on that. Maybe it's amazing Water Pulse, but I just don't see it. Um, I think if I was going to run a Water Charge move on Manta, and I'd still probably be wanting to run um, Bubble Beam and just chipping away them little bits, but giving them the debuffs, to be honest. So, running Manta... And then we are also going to be running Galarian Stunfisk. And maybe some of you guys are like, oh, Galarian Stunfisk, oh, why? But it's like, well, Galarian Stunfisk, you don't see it much anymore in Go Battle League. Like, it, you know, long gone is the the seasons where Stunfisk was the greatest, um, probably the best Pokemon in, in Great League in general for a, a good while. It was such a strong safe swap, great coverage of that Earthquake and Rock Slide. And it's still good. Um, of course, there's a bit of a rise of like water types. Um, I mean, water types have always been strong, but they're probably some of the strongest they've ever been. Even picks like um, like Polyrath, and then you've also got the rise of fighters like Annihilate and Tentacruel, and even um, Lantern seeing more and more use since you've got access to Surf, even though 
you know, you're double resisting that electric fast move, the surfs are still quite threatening and you've got to go all the way to the earthquake, which they can shield and stuff. So they said not. It's not a brilliant matchup. Um, but since Spark got its damage increased and the energy dropped a little bit, the matchup with Glaring Stunfisk is definitely a little bit more in your favour. So I thought let's give an old champion a chance to shine with Glaring Stunfisk, something new in the form of Gogo running Leaf Blade and Brick Break, and then something a bit... Mantine isn't out of pocket for a lot of trainers, but it is for me because I'm not particularly used to running it. So let's take a look at some battles, I believe. This match we got going on right now, we got Mantine locked in against Noctowl, and we can see that there was a lantern in the beginning, so the opponent's going to surrender there. Easy peasy. So we've got quite a lot of battles to get to today, so I'm not going to like hesitate too much. They're going to be going pretty fast. We're going to be jumping through. There's a lot of different leads, a lot of different matchups that we're seeing. I'm just going to talk you through best I can, like, Again, not every matchup you're going to be able to win. Some leads are going to be like, you're running to this, you're probably screwed. But like, you know, I'm going to give you guys a good gauge on how to use this team, what to look out for. And this matchup is actually a horrific start for us because a lot of teams aren't prepared for Galarian Stunfisk say swaps anymore. I know we're only got Fighter in the back, you know, they've got like Polyrath and stuff. Like they are going to um, take switch advantage off you quite easily. But there's a lot of teams where... It's going to be a bit more iffy for him, especially the new um, the new variant of Grass Hole, where you see Bastiard on the lead, you see um, Wigglytuff or another charm or something like Shadow Gramble or a lot of Ninetales in the back. And then you've also got, um, you might see Vic Victor Bell as well. And like Victor Bell is really the best answer on that team too, Galarian Stunfisk. Um, but it, you can get shields out of them, so you can kind of set yourself up better to uh, control that matchup a little bit more. On a side note, if you are running into Grass Hole um, with this team, it does very well. Like, if you run into the Classic, where you've got Bastiodon on the lead, like, Go Goat's going to do very well for you against Bastiodon because that Brick Break is double super effective. The debuffs are going to start adding up. Like, you're going to... You have to shield up one Flamethrower, but you come out of that matchup with decent amount of health and come out with a decent amount of energy. And if you shield up one... Um, flamethrower, you're going to be able to just control that matchup comfortably. Um, Gogot does well against like the Wiggly Tough, the Alloa Ninetales, if they're on the lead in that orientation. Um, it's just the Victor Belt can be a bit of a problem, and you are resisting the Razor Leafs, but they're double resisting the Vine Whips, they're double resisting the Leaf Blade, and they're resisting the Brick Break. So even though they're super squishy, it can be a bit iffy. So. Um, Gligar, you see Gligar, you're going to want to get Mantine against it. Mantine is your best answer to Gligar on the team. Um, Stunfisk can kind of do okay. Like, the dig's going to hit you like an absolute truck. They can tank um, rock slides fairly comfortably, and there's absolutely zero fast move pressure from you with the glaring Stunfisk because it's double resisting the mud shots. So you want to get Mantine against Gligar in general, if you can. Gogo does do okay, even though it's a flying type, like... The, the Vine Whips and the Leaf Blades are neutral and they hit pretty hard. Like, Gogo hits harder than you think it's going to hit. Um, not got quite as much bulk as I would like for something that was, like, forecast to be very, very strong in Go Battle League, but it's a strong Pokemon all the same. And you can see here we've actually got Feraligator and Shifter in the back on this team, which is nice for Mantine to see because we're going to be able to put some nice pressure with those wing attacks. We're going to catch on Stunfisk because... We know that we can survive enough charge moves here. We can survive another Leaf Blade if needs be. And we can still get this Rock Slide off to KO them. Um, I did try running Shiftry on a side note the um, the other day to try and give it another chance to shine. Shiftry is one of my favourite Pokemon to run in the Great League. So powerful as a say swap. And it's just not got that play anymore. We're actually having a si simultaneous KO. Mud shotting down for Alligator. They're trying to Shadow Claw us down because we had the excess Pokemon still in the back. So GG's for us. And this team, like I said, you see there with like 2,300 ELO. Um, and like I said, we're bouncing up and down around the 24, up to, I think we got up to like 2480 at one point with this team. So holding its own, but not quite punching through into veteran rank just yet. But like I said, later on in the season, that's still the equivalent of like pushing at the, knocking at the door of legend rank. So definitely a strong team to be trying. Here we've got Clod Sire. On the lead, which is a bit iffy, just because we don't really want Stunfisk against this thing. If it's running the Earthquake and that, it's it's not a good matchup because I think Clodside is bulkier 
than glaring stone fist like it's very close but clod sire is insanely bulky so it's gonna uh, play that matchup out and now we've got a grievard is it grievard yeah yeah no houndstone it's the evolved um ghost doggo and we're just gonna let this go down and we're probably going to choose to bring in Stunfisk, yeah, and then there's a Fralligator in the back. We could bring in Mantine. And Mantine, again, very decent Pokemon in the current state of the meta because so you've got strong fighting types like Polyrath and Nihilape around, which Mantine's going to do okay against with those wing attacks and those aerial aces. But also, Feraligate is a very popular choice right now. It's very strong. That Shadow Claw, it got access to Shadow Claw. You know what more do you need to say? The thing's going to be the thing's going to be a mainstay of the Great League for a good little while probably so resisting the hydro cannons making the ice beam neutral making that crunch neutral and being able to tank those moves is so so useful so mantine's definitely going to come in handy in that regard now we got the stunfisk back up against the houndstone and they can't one shot us like i don't know what moves houndstone has but there is no chance they can one shot us so we should be able to get to two rock slides very comfortably take them out and then it might be a i don't know if they swapped out of the for alligator or not it wasn't wasn't watching too closely, but if they did, we're just going to have to fast move them down anyway. They had like no HP left. That's going to be a G. A G. We're actually doing, um, and I've not been playing all my matches this season, but I'm trying to pick up a little bit more. Like last season, I was very slow paced on uh, getting all my battles done every day. And I'm not necessarily trying to make sure I get all 25 matches done. That can be quite time consuming, but make sure I keep myself a bit fresher because I definitely uh, started slacking a bit on my... Uh, on my Go Battle League presence. So, um, double say swap, we're assuming they've got payback, which is why we brought in Mantine. We just had to make the choice. We wanted to uh, like keep our Go Goat lined up with the Jellicent that was on the lead. So, we're just gonna choose to bring in Mantine, assume that they've not got um, the Wild Charge and play that match part, which they obviously didn't because they just got their own Body Slam, so fantastic for us. And now they have to throw energy at Mantine to take us out. And we're just going to be spamming these air relays to get him lower and lower. The Jellicent is now definitely in Leaf Blade range, which is great for us. And gogo has got more than enough health still to tank a Shadow Ball if they do throw one at us. If they throw a Surf, it probably will still take us out, yeah. Like, Mantine's bulky, but still, it's going to hit reasonably hard. But there's a Vigoroth in the back, which might seem like, oh, you've looked, you still type locked against the Vigoroth, though, in the end game, and there's still shields and stuff, so you're definitely going to lose this match. And it's like, maybe, maybe not, because we sat, we throw a rock slide for a start and they let it through and we don't mind because we want to throw rock slides. We need either two rock slides to land, we need a rock slide and a leaf blade, we need two leaf blades. We just need two charge moves on this thing. Earthquake isn't going to one shot. It makes it messy if they then take us out and we're trying to like vine whip them down and stuff. So we just want to spam the rock slides, potentially get the shields. Then we just need to land one leaf blade on the vigor off and one leaf blade on the Jellicent, and we do get to the Leaf Blade here. And even though the Brick Break is super effective, like I said, that first Leaf Blade is going to hit harder than a Brick Break because Stab and Amazing Move, so we throw the Leaf Blade to make sure we KO. Um, if you're kind of getting locked into a matchup and you know you're going to be playing it out and stuff, it is worth throwing the Brick Break to drop that defense, uh, put more pressure on. Like I said, you get locked in against a Lickitung with Go Go, you want to throw a Brick Break first and then start going for Leaf Blades because that defense drop makes a big difference in how the fast moves add up and how the two leaf blades are going to be throwing add up. Uh, we swap in Mantine into a Dragonite and we're met with a Lantern. This is probably going to be a loss. I don't remember how this matchup plays out, but the Lantern is going to be able to farm us down entirely because we have no moves to threaten this thing. So we're just going to go for another Aerial Ace. The only slight positive to this is that Go Goat can get extra energy because we resist all the moves. So we can take Thunderbolt. That's fine. We're going to take another charge move. That's fine. And we're just going to build up to have at least two leaf layers before we throw one. And then the Dragonite comes in, we're going to swap out into Stunfisk. And just hope that with a Lantern out of the way, the opponent apparently worries about the energy on Gogo. This, I think we'd have lost this matchup. I don't know if we still might lose this matchup. But I think if they would have just stayed in with the Lantern, been farmed down and then lined up Dragonite with... Go Goat and Stunfisk and Lickitung together, they probably would have very comfortably won this match. But you see what that did there? Them Leaf Blades did so much more damage with the Brick Break. And then we dip out to catch a Body Slam, farm down because we need extra energy against this Dragonite because we need to land a Rock Slide. And we've still all got shields on the table, still two shields apiece. So it's really coming down to the wire. And this means that this Dragonite 
is in a weird position on throwing superpower or not. But we're expecting them to just go for it. They don't. They go for Dragon Claw. So we could have comfortably let that through and cemented the victory. They catch a Rock Slide on Lantern. This is getting very, very messy. We need to fast move them down here, which we might get. We can survive this surf, which is why we're letting it go. So looking very, very close. We need to get to two Rock Slides. We're almost there with all those fast moves to take out the Lantern. And undercharging that Rock Slide might have just saved us because it was a good catch on the Lantern. Is this going to be enough? To KO, it's going to be close. In fact, we might have excess energy still on the... It does take them out. I think we might have had a Leaf Blade still loaded on the Go-Go from the attempted... Oh, wait, we threw everything into the Katong. But yeah, GG's either way, nice close game. Um, and definitely the opponent making a slight mistake there. Right, Lick Tongue on the lead. Throw the Brick Break, like I said, at first. Drop that defense, and then we're going to go for a Leaf Blade after that. So, see what they choose to do. Get that defense drop. They're going to throw the Body Slam straight away. Just let it go. You can survive one, so you might as well let it go through. We don't want to give up shields too early in the matchup and go for the Leaf Blade. We threw one extra Vine Whip because it was just before they get to the next Body Slam, so we just wanted to uh, increase that pressure a little bit. And you can see how hard that hits now. So we can definitely Vine Whip them down if we do shield up this Body Slam. And like I said, not many Pokemon really get to compete too hard with the uh, Tongue's bulk, but Gogo does a very good job at chipping its way through it fairly quickly. Charizard swaps in. Pretty unusual to see Charizard at this point, and I'm not, I guess it is, like I said, it's a strong water meta, so I think Charizard fell out of favour a little bit, but still a very strong Pokemon um, to be dealing with. We're probably going to shield this up, even though it, it was a very obvious Dragon Claw, and we might have just, now we want to survive, it's a Shadow Charizard, but I've honestly underestimated how hard that first Blast Burn was going to hit. So now we're in a weird position because we're going to bring in Stunfisk and we've got to try and get to a Rock Slide before they get to another Blast Burn. I don't know if they're energy dry, but they catch on Annihilate. So the new plan is, well, we swap straight out to Go Go and that we've lost this game, to be honest. It's, it is all done and dusted unless we get this Annihilate into, like unless we can fast move it down and come out with a Rock Slide to instantly throw the Charizard, we lose. And this is going to be close because Stunfisk is bulky, but those counters riding up that Shadow Ball does a huge amount of damage. We get the oh, simultaneous KO. One more mud shot in there. We might have just had it. I was going to say we did the wrong thing by bringing in Gogo straight away to Annihilate, but we're in a very tough spot there. GG's. Okay. Um, Guzzlord, and we both swap. So I'm not sure if... I mean... I don't mind that we both swapped at the same time. Um... But if I knew they were going to just swap in a Feraligator point blank into Gogot, I'd have stopped in with Gogot and played that matchup out because we do get to those um, those Leaf Blades quick and we can survive a Hydro Cannon very comfortably. So it's our matchup to control. But we take it with Mantine all the same. This means we can line up Stunfisk with Guzzlord, but it means they probably have a hard answer to... Um, you see, yeah. So I said that we can line up Stunfisk, but... I'm like, well, they've obviously got a good answer to go go because why would they swap the Guzzlord out at the start? Which is us trying to do like a 5D thinking like read. And there's a Mantine in the back. So not as bad as I thought it was going to be for go go. Honestly, I was expecting like a fire type like Skeledurge or something like that, which is why like I need to preserve the Stunfisk and Shields to maybe try and cope with that situation if it is. But it's a Mantine. So bringing the Stunfisk to start throwing these rock slides. We're assuming that they're not running um, Bubble Beam, but we are going to show up. Yeah, it's a Water Pulse there, so they do have the new Water Pulse move. We're not going to be too threatened. Well, it is going to hit reasonably hard, but the wing attacks aren't adding up at all. So now we can show this up. We're going to build up some extra energy because Water Pulse is quite an expensive move. We're not going to build up extra energy because they're baited with Aerial Ace, so just throw the Rock Slide, knock them out, get them out of the way. Um, it doesn't actually quite knock them out. So back to Guzzlord. We go for Earthquake here. We should be able to survive um, these charge moves. It's going to be the Crunch. Can we get to this Earthquake before they get to another Crunch? We are. And this should kill the Guzzlord. And then we can just fast move away the Mantine because our Gogo is very low. We actually catch on Gogo. We realize we needed to swap and get that Vine Whip through because I was worried that one wing attack would KO Gogo and we'd simultaneously KO. So I wanted to go for the, uh, the win rather than the tie. And it does give us the win, so it it was kind of very lucky catch on my part, but uh, happy to take the win any which way. Right, battle against Hizzet. Actually, I know this guy. He's uh, 
local, well, fairly local player to me. Um, Lowen, Shadow Lowen Ninetales on the lead. So we do have to worry about the weather ball and obviously these charms are adding up very, very fast. Uh, we're just going to go for Leaf Blade though because it is threatening. We do hit like an absolute truck. This is worth the shield because they shielded up first. Sure, whatever. Shield the weather ball. And we're going to throw, you know, throw one bind whip and then throw to optimize charge move timing. Get the second shield out of them. We're going to swap straight into Stun Fisk because we were thinking that they might be running... Um, we're thinking it might be a grass hole line, seeing a charmer on the lead, to be honest. Um, so I was thinking there might be like a Victor Bell and a Bastiodon in the back. So I thought, get Stunfisk in. Now we've got Shield Advantage because Stunfisk can sweep with Shield Advantage against that line. Um, and I wanted to preserve some health on the go go just in case there was something else in the back. And we did pull out a Lantern, which we're able to deal with because Shield Advantage and just landing the Earthquake and farming down. Take out the nine tails, and then there is a Bastiodon in the back. Nothing they can do. Doesn't even. We don't even need man time. We don't even need the rest of Go Go. That game is done and dusted. GGs. Like I said, this team does well against Grass Hole as long as you don't let get let. As long as they don't have like the perfect alignment against you, Stunfisk is going to be able to control that matchup very nicely. Go Go does well in it. Man time does okay in it. Like as long as you keep man time away from Bastiodon, really, and you're going to be looking good against the grass all line. Toxicroak lead, we're gonna to have to stop in because we do not want um we don't want Stunfisk lined up here. We misjudged their energy. Actually we don't. We expect no that was it. That's why we no shielded because we knew it was a mud bomb because we were counting. Um we knew we could just survive it. So we get to a second leaf blade. So in the one shield scenario we are going to win this matchup and that's kind of surprising. I thought we were gonna like soft lose that matchup and just I wanted them low enough for the man time to farm down and come out with some energy. They come with Stunfisk and they are ahead by one fast move. This is crap because Stunfisk does okay against our man team. It does well against our Stunfisk with the energy lead. We're going to go straight for the Earthquake. We're not going to shield bait. Um, and then we're going to try and catch an Earthquake on Mantine. So should be just here because it's one turn before we get there and they don't want to gamble on that CMV tie. So they knew they were going to throw as soon as they had it. We catch the Earthquake. That's fantastic. And we are going to be able to get this area lace off knock out the Stunfisk and then see what's in the back. Well, not knock them out, but we get the shield. What's in the back is a Bastiodon. Mm. This is no longer cash money because I think the Stunfisk built up to another Earthquake there with that shield and then dipped with the energy. So our plan here is to stall out the switch timer to preserve Mantine so that the Stunfisk has to take out both. So we swap as soon as we can, get an Earthquake off on the Bastiodon so we can deal with Bastiodon then it doesn't matter that the Stunfisk has the excess energy to Earthquake our Stunfisk because they'll be energy dry then and we can just fast move them down with Mantine. So lucky break for us that we got the switch timers misaligned to deal with that because having Mantine locked in against Bastiodon is a horrific situation, especially without that Water Pulse. That is a good argument for Water Pulse in this meta. Um, is the Bastiodon matchup? It depends on how many you're running into. If you're seeing a lot of, um, a lot of Bastiodon and a lot of like Steelix, you know, maybe run Water Pulse. But personally, I'm not seeing enough um, Steel types and not getting that alignment bad often enough to think that it's worth it. But I need to do some more research on Water Pulse. Actually, you know what? Let me actually take a look and see if... Let me see if Water Pulse is actually a good move now. Let me just check. Do, 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 do. So, sorry, dead space, but I said we've got a lot of battles to play out and I'm not going to like keep pausing them to talk to you guys. You guys can see what's happening right now while I block this up. Um, so Water Pulse, 80, 80 damage for 55 energy. It's not, it's not horrendous, but there's so many better water charge moves. Like... 1.45 damage per energy, which it's worse than Aqua Tail, it's worse than Grab Hammer Hydro Cannon, it's worse than Hydro Pump Liquidation, worse than Scold for damage, worse than Surf for damage, worse, worse than Weather Ball. So yeah, it's a it's a bad water charge move. Um, it's definitely there for coverage, um, 
like they buffed it to make it a better coverage move on their Pokemon that don't have access to it, but I wouldn't recommend you run it. Ice Beam is still very nice coverage for Mantine to have, means you can hit Skarmory for neutral, which Water Pulse does as well. But um, I think Ice Beam just gives you better better coverage, good, nice threatening against um, other flyers. Like if you end up lined up with like um, like Pidgeot and Noctowls, and also it's good for this Gligar matchup. You can actually hit Gligar on double super effective. It'll definitely just wipe them out in that case. Um, I think we might have messed up this matchup because we let too much damage through too quick. And I think we tried to bait with an aerial ace and failed the bait. I'm not, I wasn't, I was looking at the charge mode, so I'm not sure. But the Agamel to take switch advantage off us here. We can farm them down. We might be able to farm them down with Stunfisk. Do we go for it? Three, four, five. Ooh, that was risky. Could have just eaten an aerial ace there on Go Goat. Charger bug here, which is. A shame to see not lined up against the Stunfisk, but I think I think this is a game that we lose and it's all down to switch advantage. And it's just that we we misplay the uh, the Gligar matchup. And I think it's really the case of like line up man time with Gligar and just go for aerial aces. Um it's great if shields are down to go for ice beam because it will annihilate them, but you only need to land two aerial aces anyway, especially on Shadow Gligar. Um and if they shield the Ice Beam, that excess energy ends up costing you a little bit because they outpace you then to those to their aerial aces. You know what I mean? Like you're both running um, wing attack and aerial aces as a, as a move combo. Um, so you definitely have to be careful in how you play that matchup out. Right, Tentacruel lead. We're probably going to swap straight away into Mantine. More often than not, Stunfisk is our say swap of choice. Stunfisk is still an amazing say swap in general in the Great League. But in some matchups like this, we want to um, potentially keep Stunfisk for the end game because it's our better answer to Tentacruel, even though Tentacruel does have access to Scold. Like, it's not as good of a matchup as it used to be, lining up um, Stunfisk and Tentacruel, but still, that's what we're aiming for. They end up, um, they Sludge Bombers, they Sludge Wave even, which, so good shield on our part. And then we've got Sableye locked in here. So we might... Do we go for switch? I don't know if they mystery of energy here, letting us get this area lace off actually, because they've got a ton of energy. But they throw straight after, so we're gonna let it go. Fast move them down. So being ahead on energy with either Go Go or Stunfisk is fine here because the Tense Cruel is quite a bit lower now. It's in Leaf Blade range, I believe. Um we eat a return, absolutely horrific for us. Like it's like an absolute truck. But we're saving a shield for Stunfisk. We're gonna swap out straight away, see what's in the back. Annihilate. This is a done deal. So like I said, more often than not, Stunfisk is the say swap. And I think that would have been the right scenario to go for in this game still. So we would have swapped in the Stunfisk, dragged out the um, the Annihilate earlier, been able to farm it down either with um, Mantine or Gogo, And then we might have... I, I feel like it did have played out a little bit better into the end game because we need to have two Leaf Blades here and we're not going to get them. Still fairly close game, um, considering that we locked a Stunfisk in into Annihilate at the end of the game, but can't win them all. We've got the bug with it loading in the encounter screen, which I don't know if you guys have been seeing that with like research tasks and um, rewards like this, where it just fails to load the encounter and just it just decides, nah, we're not, we're not opening that encounter screen. And I don't know if it's an Android thing. I don't know if it's overall Pokemon Go. In general thing or what but we're rewarded with a nice lead to follow up with lantern absolutely amazing lead for us there they're going to swap out into liquor tongue and we're just going to debuff them first with a brick break to make sure we can definitely take switch advantage off them while maintaining that um that lantern go go match up and now we can just land an earthquake one earthquake will finish off this liquor tongue absolutely no problem whatsoever and the good thing about stunfisk is is once it takes switch advantage from Licker Tongue is that it's still a good matchup for us against the Lantern. Like they have to land a surf to knock us out. They can't fast move us down with Spark, which is why we've brought in Stunfish specifically and not Mantine. So we bring in Mantine, we take switch advantage, they get get a ton of sparks farming us down, and they can potentially then flip that end game scenario. They see Stunfisk after uh, against the Lantern, realize they might they must have had something awful in the back for that matchup as well, and they're just gonna surrender there. GG's. Charger Bug is a bit of a core breaker for this team, I'm not going to lie. I'm not seeing a lot of Charger Bug. Like, they were super popular um, 
like last season around the time that Annihilate came out, there was a particular cup in when Annihilate came out. Um, but Charger Bug, obviously, he's very strong in the Great League. It was doing well in the uh, the tournaments as well. It still sees good use, I think, in the uh, in the actual tournament scene. It's tough because the X's is going to hit you hard for super effective damage, but you can't have Mantine in here. We're just going to play it out with go -Go. And we're going to get one shield back. So it's one shield apiece, and they are quite low. They're going to give it up, actually. They're going to give up switch advantage, okay? We don't quite get a leaf blade off against the Polyrath, but this means we keep Stunfisk away from Polyrath. So very, very nice situation for us. We're not going to shield because we have a shield down already. We don't want to give that up. And they bring in for Alligator, and Stunfisk just has... Stunfisk has nowhere to go. Like, it lined up not against the Charger Bug. There's just nothing it can do. Um, so it's all on Lantern. Not Lantern, sorry, Mantine to sweep this game away if it can, and I really don't think it can. We get to another rock slide. So this for Alligator is not gonna be like super low, but relative low. They actually get this as a shield, okay. Okay, we need to land, we need to land an aerial ace. Nah, we need to farm down the for Alligator, I think. Cause we'd have to shield this up. And then they've still got a ton of energy, so they're gonna get another. Ooh, I don't know, okay. So we get to the aerial ace before they get another hydro cannon off. Can we outpace the Polyrath? We should be able to, yeah. We take the win. GG's very close game. I wasn't expecting to take that matchup at all. Right, let's take a look at this next matchup here against Aif, which is probably not pronounced that, but that's what that's what he's getting. Mantine lead, we're gonna swap straight into our Mantine. Um, that might sound like a bad idea, because like, what are you trying to align Stunfisk with it? But it's like, well, yeah, because we don't expect many man times to be running the water pulse move. And even then it's quite a bit of energy for him to get to. It's not going to KO us, they have to land two anyway, and we can just be spamming those rock slides. So generally, decent match of a stun fist to be lined up against a Mantine. But they stop in, which means that they're ahead by one wing attack, which means they can take switch advantage. Um wasn't really expecting them to stay in, to be honest, but they are going to. So we're probably going to yeah, shield this one up, see if they want to shield up, which because we will, the wing attacks are doing almost nothing because Mantine's quite bulky. Um, but this means they're going to commit their own shield and go for switch advantage. Fine, okay. Let's just farm down with um, with Go Goat. Be a tough farm down even with Stunfisk at that point and see what they've got in the back. There's a Gligar. Pretty crap situation because those wing attacks are going to be chipping away. So we've still got a shield apiece on the table. And we have to shield up first because the aerial ace is going to hit them a lot harder than the leaf blade is hitting them. So, shield up the aerial ace, go for the next leaf blade. Give us that last shield because that's the best potential we've got for Stunfisk to maybe sweep the end game. They're going to throw aerial ace as soon as they, well, the last second before we get to another leaf blade. That's fine. We bring in Stunfisk and there's a Polyrath in the back. So, uh, we're definitely going to lose this match, I think, because Earthquake is not going to take them out. We can't fast move them down. The Scold's going to come through probably our dynamic punch or power-up punch or whatever they might be running. But either way, they'll be able to deal with us on the Scold. Kick us out. G Gs. Like I said, some games, some games you're not going to win with this team. Some you are going to win. Right. Next matchup, Gligar in the lead. We're going to stop in this matchup because we want to keep Gligar away from Galarian Stunfisk. We don't want to have to be dealing with the potential digs. And because it's non-shadow Gligar, they can definitely tank two rock slides and we can't farm them down. So we'd, we'd have to land three rock slides. Awful situation for Stunfisk. So we're stopping with Go-Go and put pressure on in this matchup. We're trying to get a CMP tie um, to get the shield and then make them KO us. We decided to swap in Stunfisk midway through. So like, you know what, let's just see what's happening. They were down into single rock slide range. So we thought, let's swap in Stunfisk, see what they want to do. They preserve the energy dip out into a Polyrath. So they could have digged us, but they chose not to. We're going to just go for extra energy, force them to throw because the Rock Slide wouldn't KO, so we need to land two um, Earthquakes. They throw when we get to the Rock Slide and take us out. We're going to bring in Mantine and farm down entirely because the Icy Winds aren't going to be that threatening. The Scold's not going to be that threatening. And then we're going to dip out and preserve all this energy. Well, maybe not. It depends what they bring in. They bring in Whiskash. Okay, we're just going to dip out, preserve all that energy. Um... Probably just eat this. No, I'm going to shut up. Okay, that's fine. 
get that last shield out of them potentially. Is this a double? Do we see MP tie there? Do they have another aerialist back to back? I believe they did. Okay, they did. They burned their energy. They can knock us out here. We're not looking as bad. They undercharged to get some extra energy. They've thrown three wing attacks. So we're going to go for the aerial ace straight away. Don't want them landing an aerial ace on us because the Whizcash has to land quite a few charge moves here to deal with us. We should have thrown an aerial ace straight away. This is a scold and they debuff us. That's going to punish us. It is. If we do, okay. Bad situation. We've been debuffed. But we've got a ton of energy. We're going to chip away a little bit. This is looking pretty hopeless, right? But those mud shots are double resisted. They're doing like one damage a time to us. They're not doing anything. It's just that scold. So... If we survive this scold, when they're not in aerial ace range because we hit them with a debuffed aerial ace at first. So we're going for the ice beam because it hits slightly harder than aerial ace. Is it going to be enough? It just is. <laughs> One HP in a dream, taking the win. I thought that was a loss. I was almost going to top left and be like, oh no, yeah. Especially getting the de attack debuff. We've lost for sure, but just managing to bring that around. So very clutch matchup for sure. Bastard on lead, like we said. We love to see Bastiod on, on the lead. We love to see it anywhere that's not against Mantine. We're going to go for a brick break first. And you're going to see this doesn't do a ton of damage, even though it's double super effective. Um, respectable chunk, though. And this is why you do have to commit to shielding one flamethrower in this matchup if you do want to take it. I said it feels like a good matchup for Go Goat, but they do win in the zero shield matchup. So, Medicham comes into meters, so we are expecting a grass hole line at this point. We're expecting it to be like a wiggly tough. Um, or potentially a Victor Bell in the back. So they've got we bring in Mantine to Medicham, obviously, because of that super effective wing attack damage. We build up some extra before we throw, because they did throw a psychic, so they're energy dry. Take them out. And Bastiodon's gonna come back in. And this is a shame that they're gonna get so much energy. If we had water pulse, again, I would say water pulse, this is probably the main matchup you want it for. Um we'd be looking a little better because they wouldn't be able to as comfortably just farm us down here, but Go for the Ice Beam, an extra bit of chip damage. Judge is gone for double Ice Beam. I'm going to swap in Go Go aggressively. See what they choose to throw at us here. We let it go through. It's a Stone Edge. We survive. We throw a, a Brick Break into Victor Bell. This is going all kinds of sideways, but we get a shield out of them. So there's hope. We've got a shield. Their defense is dropped, so we can just land a Rock Slide to take them out. We've got a shield out of them. So. They'd have committed just two shields to this Victor Bell. I think they'd have been looking a little bit better, but we might just be able to take this because they're not going to throw the Leaf Blade as soon as they get there. They're not going to go to get that shield off of us. And now this means that we can just farm them down and we have got enough health here to actually get to an Earthquake. So I don't know. I think they thought that their win condition was just fast moving all the way through and that they would lose if they threw a charge move. But if they'd have thrown um, an Acid Spray or... Uh, a leaf blade or something and got rid of our um shield and maybe dropped his defense if they'd have thrown acid spray they'd be able to fast move us down if they'd have had to throw like leaf blade or something they might have had a chance to get to a second charge move with the bastard on her it would have been close um but we take the win in that game anyway right i'll tell you a lead awful you hate to see the dragons against this thing especially a flying dragon like everything's resisted we swapped a stun fisk might sound like a silly idea to swap Stunfisk in because that's your hard counter, but I class Mantine as a pretty hard counter anyway because in an endgame scenario, if we get a shield out of them, the Ice Beam's going to basically one-shot it anyway. So we're not super stressed. We get a shield out of them as well, so it's looking very good for setting up that endgame scenario. We're not shielding up the Stunfisk, I don't think. No, we're just going to go for these Earthquakes, get it potentially like get it low because um, I said Earthquakes not going to KO. We need to land probably a second one. Yeah, even a Rockside wouldn't care at this point. We're hoping they throw another move here. They do. Okay. We're like, we're not going to get to that Earthquake, but they pull the trigger and just mirror shot us out of there. So not doing particularly a ton of damage. We're going to bring in Gogo and farm up a ton of extra energy because the um, the Vine, not the Vine, it's the Power Whips, it add up quite a bit on the Mantine and we want the health on the Mantine to be able to get to those Ice Beams against Altaria. So we're just going to stop him with Gogo get tons of energy here um, before we throw. We're going to want, want to have a spare Leaf Blade, basically, so that then we can start out the last matchup and potentially sneak in a Leaf Blade against whatever's in the back. You know, we have to swap in and throw instantly to throw it on something that's not the Alteria. I'm going to throw a move here with shields. Since we've got two shields left, might as well spend them somewhere. And there's a Deoxys in the back. Okay. Kind of scary, kind of not, because 
We have to worry about Thunderbolt. It will do a man an immense amount of damage, being double super effective. And this probably is Thunderbolt. Yeah, it is. Okay, so that's fine. This means we can throw two area lasers here to potentially get the shield out of them or get them pretty low. And then before they get to the next Thunderbolt, we can bring Swapping Go Go, throw the Leaf Blade straight away because the Alteria stayed in a little bit. And um, and through a sky attack, so the switch time as well. Out of sync, we eat a cycle boost. We're not worried at all about eating a cycle boost on Go Go because it's just like it's it's dead weight against the Alteria. So you know, throw that energy, waste it. That's fine. I think if they'd have not thrown and just swapped an Alteria, would have lost because they'd be able to get Thunderbolt off on us here. But because they did, they spent some extra energy. Cycle boost wouldn't be enough from that range to KO us, so we can just go for double aerial ace here and just take them out and take. The win is a bit of a misplay by the opponent, I think, but maybe the switch towers were more out of sync than I thought, and maybe they just had to throw the Cycle Boost to stall it out longer to get the Alteria back in. I'm not sure, but either way, another Bastiodon on lead. There are quite a few Grasshole lines floating around, and it's definitely a Grasshole line because it's swapping to Wigglytuff, so we're expecting something else. It's a lot of fast move pressure in the back. We go for Leaf Blade to soften up the Wigglytuff, um, this is just so that then, regardless of like if they're choosing to like shield up and um, getting those icy wind debuffs and stuff, it just makes this a lot, lot cleaner. I'm going to go for this rock slide, which won't KO because they have debuffers, but it will get them pretty low and we can probably fast move them down and have an earthquake loaded, ready for that bastard on. We get there just before they get another icy wind off. Very good for us. Throw the earthquake straight away. It doesn't matter that we're debuffed by one stage. This is going to do monstrous damage either way and they're still... Have to worry about the next one coming through, which we're just going to throw it here straight away as soon as we get to it because it was good charge move timing. Takes him out. What's in the back? Victor Bell. We're going to swap him Mantine quickly before they get too much energy. And we're not going to throw charge moves because they got two shields, we got two shields. So we're just going to fast move down. Just keep throwing fast moves because we're pretty even pace and we just take them out. And it's going to be a good game. So looking solid, this team. Like I said, it, it's been fairly positive in general running it scammer leads scammer leads not brill against go go just because like i said the vine whips are double so double resisted the um the leaf blaze double resisted brick breaks neutral and starts to wide up but we don't want to be in that situation if we can avoid it so we're just swapping stone face and we see hakamo and hakamo I, I almost did a video talking about it instead of this one because brick break buff you know, it's pretty decent, means it's got a bit more versatility in a few different matchups. Um, I think it's probably better than Comma O right now, because with Comma O before, you had to throw um, close combat, and that obviously nerfs your defense, it puts you in a weird position, but now Comma O's got access to Brick Break as well. I think Hakamo's probably, it's got more bulk in the Great League, so it's probably still the Pokemon of choice. We're just going to farm down with Mantine. They swap out and preserve a little bit of health, on the Hakamo, I don't think they preserved a move. I don't think they dipped out with the Dragon Claw. And because they swap Mantine in aggressively, we're just going to stop in and go for these Ice Beams because we don't want to line up Gogo here if we can avoid it. And I think some people do this when they get switch advantage. They get a little bit eager to not like be farmed down or anything like that and swap in and then end up compromising themselves. But now we can shield this up. They threw Brave Bird at the Mantine so their defense is through the floor. And we're going to Vine Whip down the Skarmory because they were super debuffed. And there's a Dragonair in the back. Kind of scary, but they swap in, so they lock in. So we can throw Brick Bricks and they can't clear these defense drops. I don't think it's going to be enough to KO, though. I don't think we're going to be able to do enough damage here. Probably should have thrown that Brick Break as soon as we got it, though, because we need the Vine Whip to do extra damage if it can. We go for Leaf Blade because Leaf Blade is going to do more damage than Brick Break. Is it enough? It is not. GG's. They, go, they win with all three Pokemon still alive, but... Not by much. Close game, like Hakamo and Scammer were basically dead, so good game. Another Scammer lead. You hate it when this happens, when you have a bad lead. You're like, okay, well, bad leads happen. You swap into um, the next matchup and it's the same bad lead, and you're like, oh, and you just feel frustrated with it. Met with a Whizcash, so Stonefisk. I'd say it's a good safe swap, but there are some good hard answers to it out there that are quite popular, so got to be careful with that. We're just going to take the charge move, go for the Earthquake. We're not particularly bothered. We're not fighting for switch advantage against a Whiskash. We can't get it. We can't win switch advantage. Unless, for some reason, we go two shields and they go zero. And why would they do that when they had Skarmory on go-go? So no point. 
um, given that situation, like make it any worse for us. We just farm down with go go. We'll have like a brick break. We'll be one shy of a brick break, I think. And we'll swap into Mantine, see what they've got in the back. They're stopping in for now. We expect this to be a brave bird, and then they're gonna swap to whatever's in the back. Just a sky attack, okay. They're still in, they're still in. We're like, we're hesitating to throw because we're expecting them to, to swap out any second. So now maybe we're thinking they've got something weak to Mantine in the back. Might be a fighter, might be Polyrath. Might even be something like a for Alligator, then they're just not sure what to do with the Mantine right now. But we're just gonna shield up, go for probably another Ice Beam here. This might seem like it's iffy because, I mean, if they can, they can throw a Brave Bird now and they can like basically take us out but they're also pretty much spent. Like they're in a leaf blade range. They're in like a brick break range. Swap and go, got what's in the back, annihilate, but they're up oh, two shields. So this game is pretty much done. Um, if there had been like, there'd have been for alligator in the back and it wasn't running ice beam, maybe, but being down two shields um, is pretty rough. Them double baiting the brave bird and not actually dipping out um, was definitely what, Put that game in their favor because we could have just taken a sky attack on the mantine but expecting a brave bird definitely uh intimidated us into giving up shields and i lately as long as they're not running ice punch it's not a bad lead the running ice punch is quite a bit more pressure on you but what i find anyway in this matchup is because most of my lips now are running night slash and shadow ball is they just throw a night slash at you and um, we are going to shield up because we were expecting it could be a shadow ball, but what I found through the course of like these games and stuff is that Annihilates tend to just throw Night Slash and go go. And I think it's because they feel like it's quite squishy, and I mean it is quite squishy, but this is a Night Slash and we can take it. And that means if they don't throw another move, we'll get to this Leaf Blade and be able to take switch advantage in the um, in the one shield. Comes into Farmers Down, Geogong, we're not quite able to get a Leaf Blade off, that's a shame. I'm gonna come in with Stun Fist because the Rock Slides are super effective. We're expecting an Icy Wind, I think. Yeah, and we do get Icy Winded, that's fine. They dip out to Lickitung. We're gonna preserve the energy because Lickitung's bulky enough without throwing a nerfed charge move into it with all the energy. And we do have to worry about Drill Run from that Dugong potentially later on. So it's gonna bring in Mantine, do whatever work Mantine needs to do. We're probably going to be able to get them the Lickitung down into Rock Slide range. If we get it down into Rock Slide range, we're looking pretty good because the Dugong is energy dry. So, with that much energy lead on Stunface, we got nearly two rock slides. We should be able to take this game. So, do another aerial ace, getting low. One more aerial ace, very nice for us. It won't quite KO them. But what this means is, we're not in, they're not in rock slide range anymore. They're in mud shot down range. So they definitely have to dip out to Dugong as soon as they can because we the last thing they need us to have is even more energy. Gonna go for this rock slide just before they get to a potential icy wind or draw run. And they're gonna throw, and I think we choose to let this go. We're expecting another icy wind, but we're confident we can survive the yeah, this icy wind. Okay, we're not gonna let it go. But I was confident that it was um, then. I was thinking, oh, they might throw icy wind, they might throw a draw run, but actually draw run would do quite a bit of damage there. Whereas we can just take them out, even with the icy wind debuff. Well, I was underestimating how much they needed to debuff us on our attack. Um, they're outside the Lickitung, take them out, G, Gs. So that's all the battles I've got with this team to show you guys. I said go goats strong in all those matchups where leaf blade is neutral it can put so much work in like it's just it's so strong like being able to throw a brick break and a leaf blade and then be threatening like a liquor tongue which is, it's only 10 turns it's five it's five vine whips to br brick break and to leaf blade and then it's five to the next one if you throw in just leaf blades back to back it's five then it's four so like 18 turns um, did I say 10 turns for the, yeah, it's 20 turns, it's 10 vine whips, but that's very fast to be threatening that much damage, and it's got reasonable bulk, I can see why it would have been potentially broken if they gave it rock slide, especially with it being a Pokemon that up to this point is exclusive to the Safari Zone, like the in-person events going on right now, if you don't have access to a go go there's probably someone local to you that went to one of these safari zones um, that you might be able to trade for. Um, I know I've given out a few to my local community and I've still got a ton I'm hanging on to. Um, but it's strong. It's got unique coverage for a grass type. It feels very similar to um, 
It feels similar to Chestnut, but you're not having to throw superpower. You can throw Brick Brick and drop their defense. I'd say it feels similar in bulk to, to Chestnut, and it doesn't have the extra drawbacks of being a fighting type, because being a fighting type, in this meta doesn't do you a lot of favors. Fighting type doesn't grant you many resistances, but you're weak then to like flying damage. And there's a lot of aerial ace users right now. Um, and there are there are some psychic move users. There are some fairy type users. It's like, oh, Chestnut against Wigglytuff is horrific, but go go against Wigglytuff, you can go toe to toe and you can like make them sweat a bit, uh, even though they can eventually charm you down if they have got shields to commit, but Again, that means you can get shields out of them. Like, otherwise Wigglytuff can tank a Frenzy Plant from Chestnut and then charm me down before you get to anything else. So I'd consider it like a upgrade on Chestnut, even without Frenzy Plant, like go-go. Oh, lost the, uh, don't know why the recording stopped there for a second, but yeah, I would say it's a stronger Chestnut. Anyway, long story short, I'll not, uh, obviously a sign I'm going on too long. Let me know what you think about the team in general. Let me know what you think about Go-Goat. Um, I was thinking about making another video. Like I said, I thought about making a video with Hackamore and showing off what that thing can do now in the in the Great League with Brit Break. So let me let me know if you guys want to see that or something different. And obviously, I'll be making something with the Ultra Premiere as well with that coming in um, tomorrow. Nice and exciting. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. I'm here semi-regularly. If you've been a long-time viewer, you know that it's definitely semi-regularly. But thank you guys, and I will catch you all next time.